So this decision by the Supreme Court, this 7-0 decision, is specific to the injunction application, which was meant to stop the application of the E-Levy beginning May 1. There is a substantive case which the same three members of parliament, Mama Yarga, you have also Harun Idrisu and Samuel Kode Blakwa, are seeking the apex court uh, to declare as null and void the decision by parliament to approve the E levy, raising questions of constitutionality specific on Article 1041 of the 192 Constitution. But let's go on to the telephone now. And I have uh, the, the lawyer Abraham Maleba. He is a member of the NDC uh, legal team and, in fact, the director of legal of the NDC. Well, Malaba, good evening to you. Thank you for your time uh, this evening. The Attorney General uh, says that you came into court without enough evidence to prove the case um, as you brought to it a reason why the court ruled unanimously throwing out the injunction. Your, your reaction to this? Well, the Supreme Court gave reasons for rejecting the injunction. They said that greater hardship will be forced the government. The government will suffer greater hardship if they went ahead and granted the injunction. And so that's the reason we know the Supreme Court did not say that they refused the injunction because we did not provide evidence. So the Attorney General must mind his way. Those who have their palm panel cracked for them by benevolent spirits must learn to be humble. And this is not the way Attorney General speak. Is it a reading from what you, you were in court today, uh, looking at what panned out, that because the E-Levy had started in terms of application from May 1, in, in the wisdom of the justices of the Supreme Court, uh, uh, granting this injunction would rather cause irreparable damage? Is, is, is that the reason? I even disagree with the Supreme Court, uh, the reasons they gave, that greater hardship will cause the government. Before E-Levy, government was going about its activities. Government was paying salaries. Government provided uh, funds for the feeding of uh, school children. Government provided funds for the feeding of prisoners. Um, they paid the... Uh, 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 the, the those who provided them with electricity, they paid them the IPP. Government was going about these activities even before e -level. So to say that if they injunct the government from collecting the e -level, then greater hardship will cause the government. I am saying that that is not true because the government did not suffer when there was no e -level. Government machinery was ongoing. But the other aspect of it is they said that they were admonishing the uh, uh, GRA yes. to keep proper account. And then when the substantive matter is ruled in favor of the minority, then they should refund those money to pay, uh, payees. And I find it a bit difficult to appreciate that because is it going to be refunding the money with interest or just the value of the money? Because you can't take my money keep it for three days, four days, say one week, three months, and then return that same amount to me. That was not clear to me. And so the reasons given by the Supreme Court for me were untenable. It is rather the people of Ghana who will suffer greater hardship. To the extent that uh, the uh, courts, you say, uh, give that particular consideration that GRA keep, keep records, as you have been doing always, in an event that when the substantive case is heard and the E-Levy approval is declared unconstitutional, then the money should be refunded to the Ghanaian people. It should come in with interest. That's what you're arguing. So my question is, is it coming with interest? The GRA cannot take money from the people of this country, keep it for a while, and when the court says refund, then they will simply refund the principal amount without an interest. I think that if there's going to be a refund, it should come with interest.
Let me refer to the affidavit uh, in opposition to this uh, application of injunction that the Attorney General presented in court today. I'm quoting from it. It said that it is the case of the AG that records from Parliament show that during the passage of the e-levy on March 29 this year, 137 MPs from the majority were actually present meeting the constitutionally required quorum for decision making for the avoidance of doubt apart from sarah ajwasa for all the 137 members of majority were present in the chamber with the minority rather missing as many as eight members this bothers on the substantive case isn't it the 1041 that underlines the constitutionality that the three mps are seeking in this substantive case how does this bother on the substantive case with reference to this affidavit that the Attorney General presented earlier in court today? Indeed, the plaintiffs in this matter, the three MPs, in their main case, are alleging constitutional breach. Simplicity. Article 104, like you indicated. And so for the Attorney General to now... Let me not... Uh, let me go straight to the point. To lie to the court that there were 137 apart from Adria Tafo. We all know that the Minister for Chief Tenancy Affairs was nowhere near in the Parliament, uh, uh, the grounds of Parliament, I mean the, the Chamber of Parliament. We knew that he was held up in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an ambulance. So how come that Attorney General will be making that statement that there were 137 with the exception of Adjoa when the chief tenancy minister was held up in an ambulance, was that the floor of parliament in the ambulance? So the attorney general must be candid and stop engaging in what I call lawfare. Lawfare. Lawfare is trying to win your case in, in public. Just like warfare. What the attorney general is engaging now is what I call lawfare, and he must desist from that. This attorney general is becoming one uh, uh, unbecoming. All right, Malaba, I thank you for your time this evening.